Hello everyone, this is chlorocetophenone that I recently synthesized. I need this substance for organic synthesis. It has an active chlorine atom and a carbonyl group, which makes it a very useful reagent in organic chemistry. Ten years ago, when I worked in a lab, I synthesized this literally by the kilograms. But regarding this particular batch, I have other plans for it. Dangerous, illegal plans. Chloroacetophenone is a white crystalline substance that, in small concentrations, has a pleasant scent of apples or bird cherry. But it has another interesting property. It's a very strong irritant, or tear gas. This substance was used for a long time in tear gas canisters. The original mace formulation was a 1% solution of chloroacetophenone. It was also used in grenade form for riot control and dispersing demonstrations. Now it's used less and less. It has been replaced by more potent and less harmful irritants such as CS and CR. There have also been documented cases of its use in the Russian-Ukrainian war by the Russians to smoke Ukrainian soldiers out of trenches. Although in most cases they still use the aforementioned CS and CR grenades, ones with chloroacetophenone are also encountered. The use of irritants for military purposes, by the way, is prohibited by the Geneva Convention and constitutes a war crime. But the Russians clearly don't care about these conventions. Now let's move on to the synthesis. A small disclaimer here. I performed this synthesis for educational purposes. Do not, under any circumstances, try to repeat this at home. This is not a tear gas making tutorial, so I am not providing the exact conditions or proportions of the reagents, only a general description of the process. Chloroacetophenone is a persistent substance, and if you contaminate your home with it, the consequences will be catastrophic. Here is my apparatus for obtaining chloroacetophenone. This is the chlorine generator. I am dripping hydrochloric acid onto trichloroisocyanuric acid, and chlorine is released. What you see is not the proper way to assemble a gas generation apparatus, but it works. Next, the chlorine passes through a flask with calcium chloride for drying. Then, it is bubbled into a solution of acetophenone in acetic acid. From time to time, I disconnect the flask with the chloroacetophenone and weigh it on a scale. When its mass reaches a certain pre-calculated value, the reaction can be considered complete. If the chlorine is not dried, the water in it will also contribute to the mass and the end point of the reaction will be impossible to determine. After the reaction was finished, I poured the acetic acid solution of chloroacetophenone into water. A lot of oil separated, which was reluctant to crystallize. I took a sample from the solution, and with the help of isopropanol and a refrigerator, I managed to obtain crystals. When I added these seed crystals to the entire solution, the chloroacetophenone crystallized, but not completely. It was a mixture of crystals and oil. I filtered the crystals and pressed them to squeeze out the water and oil. I recrystallized a small amount of the chloroacetophenone from alcohol for purification. Although I shed a few tears while working with chloroacetophenone, handling it turned out not to be as terrifying as described. I was hoping for more. So, to raise the degree of stupidity to the maximum, I made this. This is a tear gas grenade. I've always wanted to make something like this to test what it's like to be in a cloud of tear gas. I didn't fill it completely, only about a third of the capacity. This will be entirely sufficient for the test. Such a grenade is, of course, illegal. Do not do this under any circumstances. If you really want a tear gas grenade, you can buy a civilian version completely legally on Amazon. Some of them contain pava powder, which is dispersed by an explosion. Some of them are essentially a gas canister. I don't know why one would need such a thing, but there it is, and you can buy it. My grenade and the fuse are almost entirely 3D printed. This is not a combat grenade, but an airsoft replica, designed for white and colored smokes. I have already made a video about this, so if you want to know how it works and where to get the print files, check out that video. Again, this is not a tutorial and I will not show how to assemble a tear gas grenade here. I will only say that everything works very similarly to a colored smoke bomb. I must also say that I did this purely out of curiosity, 
not for actual application and I am in no way associated with the Ukrainian army or other military formations. Now let's conduct the test. This pop, that's the grenade breaking apart and ceasing to function as intended, but that's not a problem. The smoke is still coming out. So I ran into the smoke and immediately felt pain and irritation in my eyes. Breathing this smoke is also painful. After some time I felt skin irritation on my face. Perhaps some of the chloroacetophenon condensed on the skin. So I am quite satisfied with the test. I had a good cry in the smoke cloud. That's all for today. Goodbye.